uh, I guess as English supervisor, I should start with a Shakespearean quote. Uh, Shakespeare said, brevity is the soul of wit, but I would add to it, I don't think anybody has ever accused me of being brief, especially when it comes to celebrating the work of the English department, great teachers and great students. And that's the focus of tonight. So it is very much a different look than you're typically used to, but it is an opportunity for us to really highlight the district aims, priorities, and strategic elements of powerful learning, of personalization, uh, partnership, service, and inquiry, which has been very much a part of our work for a number of years. And as Mrs. Cangelosi Hay just said, um, these are the things beyond the test scores that you seldom get to see. Uh, and it is unfortunate that high school, public schools in general, um, really become just a bunch of statistics about how are you doing on this test, how are you doing on that test. And one of the things I would argue is what students ultimately remember from their time in school and the most valuable things they take away from that experience is this more personal, meaningful work that they do. Um, so tonight, it really is an opportunity to highlight some of that work and sort of um, commend and denote some of the work that our kids are doing that I think if I had all the power in this Department of Education, these are the things we would be looking at all the time uh, as opposed to your traditional test scores. Um, a couple of elements sort of are significant to all of this work, and it's authenticity and agency. So this is a, a coupling of empowering teachers to get creative, to get imaginative, and to do the things that they feel students will get excited about, will get engaged about, and giving the students the power to sort of direct their own learning, pick out the things that they read, pick out the things that they might write about, and decide where that work is going to go. So tonight, I'm going to highlight a couple of uh, staff members and their projects, and I'll have them come up and, and join me and, and sort of take the lead a little bit. Um, in speaking about the project and about the student work. So the first um, project I'm going to draw attention to is Ms. Bowsom's Agents of Change. So come on up, Ms. Bowsom. I will highlight that um, this is a project that Ms. Bowsom developed a few years ago, and she has invited me in to see um, where students really get to direct their learning. And I know even earlier this year, just a few weeks ago, I happened to be passing through the media center here, and students are out picking books um, on the topics that they want to pursue. Um, it's something that she makes very much a part of her course. But I'll let her talk a little bit about the project itself, and then we'll shift to highlighting some of her former students and the work that they did. So, Ms. Bowson. And that quote was, brevity is the soul to wit. <laughs> All right, I'll do my best. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to share with you the Agents of Change project and to recognize the outstanding young people um, and the work that they've done. So the Agents of Change project begins with a question. What change, what positive change would you like to see in the world? Um, and, and this can be not just the big world, but it could be in our school, in our town, in our state, country, wherever that change might happen, uh, the kids get the agency to find out ways that they can learn more about a problem that they see or something they want to see different in the world. And they get to choose their own independent reading novel. Uh, they learn how to use electronic databases to find multiple sources. And not just on their own particular points of view, but um, other points of view opposing uh, claims and, and ideas about the topic. Uh, they look for a charity organization that advocates and helps solve the problems that they see. And we end up with all kinds of amazing topics, broad ones with the environment, uh, health and wellness, um, policy, public policy, big, big important topics get narrow and then the students not only write a paper or do some presentation, they advocate and share their information with their classmates and what's even better is they go beyond the walls of the school and uh, make all kinds of changes. So that's sort of the project in a nutshell. And did I hit it all? Yeah, okay. So, so students that um, I invited and it, I had so many kids in mind, but the, 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 the young people who are here right now really stood out to me 
as caring very much uh, about their topics. They were personally important to them. Their inquiry questions were outstanding. Um, they chose uh, novels that were thoughtful and, and provided information and lenses. And then their classmates deemed their projects to be some of the most persuasive and well done. So um, that's why I have Parth here who um, did his project on um, disaster relief and, um, and how he can bring um, better things to, to schools and students who, who need help. Um, what's really cool is that Parth didn't just deliver a great speech, he's also created a club here called Tech for Teens um, and he's just such an advocate for um, doing good things for people all over the world. Um, Shrada's here tonight. Hi, Shrada. And Shrada did her topic uh, on fast fashion. And she didn't just care about human rights, she cared about the environment, um, and asked her students to think about how we buy our clothes and what we do with them when, when we've outgrown them or we're tired of them. Um, Shrada is now in an environmental club where she very recently ran a uh, a clothing swap um, called Gift to Thrift, um, and I made it down there after tutorial and got myself a really great shirt. Um, so she's, you know, really going out there and, and making some big changes. Um, I understand you're also using this particular topic with some AP research that you're doing um, right now as a senior, because that was a long time ago. Um, Justin Yonetta, where's Justin? Justin is my angler in the house, and I knew that he loved to fish, so I was always looking at opportunities for him to read and write about fishing. So in his project, uh, he shared with us some of the problems with factory fishing and overfishing. Um, he shared with us some problems that um, are happening with the habitat for trout and, and other types of, of fish. And uh, he created not only a club here, a fishing club, um, but is also running a little business if anybody's looking for some great uh, fishing gear. Uh, and again, it was something that I knew he really cared about and, um, and created a really persuasive, impressive um, project. Um, I have Dhruv here. Where's Dhruv? There's Dhruv. Um, Dhruv was new to our school and fit right in in, um, in the English class where he joined us. And Dhruv cared very much about homelessness and poverty. Um, he presented a fabulous speech to his classmates. They, most of the virtual donation dollars went to you, Dhruv, in that particular class. Um, and in reaching out to the charity organization called Good360, they were so impressed with your work, I shared some of your work with them, um, that they sent Dhruv a giant box of some beautiful, uh, beautiful merch um, and asked if there's any way that we can, uh, they can help us. And I said, well, how can we help you? So um, he really brought some great awareness to that charity organization. Where's Sarah? There's Sarah. Sarah had such a, an interest. Um, it all started with a book she read for class. Um, Sarah's interested in law, so her broad topic was public policy. And she cared very much about a story um, of one of our very own, um, a student who graduated from our high school and um, sadly died um, at Penn State University with a, a hazing incident that I know the family um, has a, an advocacy charitable organization um, that helps children with prosthetics, correct? But that wasn't really Sarah's initial idea. It was what can she share with her classmates about doing what's right in situations where people might fear that there's some kind of legal repercussion. So Sarah shared with us the Good Samaritan Law. And again, her project really stood out as persuasive and heartfelt and we learned a lot uh, there with her Good Samaritan Law presentation. And then Tatiana, where's Tatiana? I lost her, she is. So Tatiana loved bees. I knew you loved bees. And um, I was so impressed when she said, you know, I, I really want to do a project where I share my interest. I think you were running some beehives in your community. Um, so she brought that interest into the classroom and shared her advocacy for how important bee pollination is to our entire ecosystem. I think you even brought us some honey sticks, didn't you? Um, and she created such a powerful presentation that um, I think made a big influence on her, on her classmates. And I believe that today, 
uh, Tatiana is using that, that early research for her AP uh, research project where she's looking at pollination. So these are some amazing kids that took a project and instead of just doing school, um, instead of just a flat paper or something turned in on Google Classroom, they took their interests and their work that we did in freshman English and they're doing some amazing things with it and they truly are agents of change. So I'm really proud to have been a part of that process. So thank you very much. Well done. Thank you very much, Mrs. Balsam. Um, as we sort of continue this continuum, I think one of the things that was fascinating to see was uh, Mrs. Balsam runs this project with the students when they're freshmen. So here's an opportunity for them to get involved, reach out and do something, and again, make a change, make a difference in the world in some way that is meaningful to them. I've been fascinated to hear how many of these stories have parlayed into clubs and activities and then higher level research that they are continuing at the AP seminar and research level. So I want to call up Mrs. Donhauser and Mrs. Stutzman who have brought that program to us a number of years ago. They recognized the, um, the, the sort of value and virtue of the AP seminar and research classes and the capstone projects and how they are a true manifestation of student-led inquiry where the teacher is literally standing to the side and guiding them in a process of finding a topic, shaping a question, and uh, certainly you'll hear a little bit more about the level and caliber of work that students do at this level and the difference that it makes and the opportunities it affords to them. So. Hi everyone, um, I'm Kathy Stutzman and I wanted to talk a little bit about the two courses that are part of the AP Capstone program, seminar and research, as well as a newer um, elective called Senior English Inquiry. So AP Seminar, the first course in that Capstone program, requires students to synthesize perspectives from multiple disciplines, to solve real world problems in teams and individually, and then last year student presentations included titles like this is quite a variety, Barbie the Plastic Menace, Automation's Effect on Business Decisions, and Acts 20 and 22 in Puerto Rico. AP Research builds on those skills and asks students to shift from more practical questions to more conceptual academic research. Here they aim to contribute to an academic discipline by identifying a genuine gap that exists in research and conducting their own study to fill it. By the end of the course, students essentially write a mini dissertation that they submit to College Board and defend it in a presentation. This year's topics already are including some amazing things, autonomous navigation in virtual environments, the impact of political conflict in Chechen society, and comedic hate speech on TV. If students pass both of these exams and four other AP exams, they receive what's called the AP Capstone Diploma. Dr. Zerwicki will specifically honor the students of ours who um, achieved that distinction this year when she presents to the board about the counseling department. Um, but finally, we also have that, that newish elective in the last couple of years called Senior English Inquiry, and that provides students with the opportunity to pursue a topic of interest. It's rooted in studies of curiosity and in learning dispositions established by Elaine Aguilar. Um, and here students explore ideas, ask questions, interview experts, develop studies or projects, and create a lear learning portfolio um, with artifacts of their learning to share. This year, students are exploring topics like color theory and fashion and creating film with music as a focus. So Meg Donhauser is gonna share a little bit more about some specific student proje projects. Uh, so like uh, Ms. Sutzman said, in AP Research, uh, students are writing an academic paper and they complete a presentation and an oral defense. Um, our students tend to score very well above New Jersey average, but some even go beyond that and pursue publication or presentations. This requires a huge commitment outside of class, so even after the school year is done, because students often need to cut back on word count, change citation styles, make other changes to transform a college board paper into a paper ready for publication. So I'm gonna talk about three students. Um, so Elena, um, combined her interest in mental health and her volunteer work with EMTs to write a comparison of PTSD rates 
rates and determining factors in New Jersey female and male emergency medical technicians. Uh, she adapted the PTSD checklist from the DSM-5, and after collecting resp uh, responses from over 100 EMTs, she used JASP, which is an open source statistical program to draw conclusions, which you will learn about when you read her paper this February in the International Journal of High School Research. Um, Elena was also one of the few students who was able to work with an expert advisor, um, somebody in the field with both specialized content and the research method. Um, and then there's Kristen, who wrote the paper, The Forgotten Placebo, a correlational study between angularity and intended use in common American psychotropics. Uh, that's available now in the Journal of High School Silent, um, Science. She collected data from the prescriber's digital reference to choose her sample of both simulating and calming drugs, and then correlated this information with the shape of the pill. One of Kristen's biggest achievements during the process was that she taught herself how to calculate a phi correlation, um, which is a complex statistical test. I know it's weird to hear an English teacher talking about this. Um, um, and then not one to shy away from a challenge, she spent extensive time this summer preparing her manuscript for publication. Um, and then there's Tarun, and the rumor in seminar last year, oh, thanks. The rumor in seminar last year was that he cured breast cancer. Um, well, this is obviously not the case. Uh, Tarun is going to be presenting his research at the European Association of Cancer Research, which he told me tonight is the second most important cancer conference in the world. Um, he will be doing a virtual poster presentation on the identification of novel genes that are dysregulated due to altered DNA methylation and metastatic breast cancer. So using data from the Cancer Genome Atlas, Alice's BRCA project, Tarun developed a machine learning model to search almost half a million data points for significant genes. He identified seven genes which could aid in future treatments for breast cancer. Um, and Tarun is uh, continuing his work this year because um, he's one of the handful of students who have taken both AP Capstone and Senior English Inquiry. Um, and what's so exciting is that all three of these students have now contributed to their field and other people will be able to access their work, um, maybe even cite it in their own studies. So we thank you for supporting this program and we're excited to see what these students do next. Thanks. So I just, I, I think that's an amazing bookend of where our students begin, some of the journeys they go on and some of the places they go, and I suspect they will continue to go. Um, I know in the opportunities that I've had and many of the staff here have had uh, to see these presentations, be it in the classroom as freshmen or be it in their defenses uh, at the end of the year, uh, staff is consistently blown away. We've had expert outside advisors come in, we've had staff from colleges come in and commend the quality and level of work that our students do and sort of the opportunities and structures that our classrooms are affording these kids to really shine, explore their interests and discover their passion. So um, that's it for me, but I would really love if the board would indulge, if we could really get a group picture of uh, the students, the teachers, uh, and just really in an opportunity to celebrate their work. So I don't know if, and parents, so you can get your phones ready also. Um, I don't know if folks, if you want to come around the front of the table there and uh, all students will just ask you to come on up for a quick picture. Trust me, I, as, as difficult as this may be, mom and dad will love the opportunity and the picture. So come on up. And Miss uh, Balsam.
So uh, I'll take a couple of questions, or if appropriate, I'll defer those questions to either the teachers or, or the students, even though I did promise the students they wouldn't have to speak tonight. But uh, <laughs> if, if there's some genuine, genuine curiosities or questions, we're, we're happy to take them. I don't have any questions, but wow, yeah. uh, my head is spinning. I mean, I'm just so impressed with all of these students, and thank you, teachers, for supporting them in these efforts, and I am just blown away by the creativity and intellect and just uh, forward-thinkingness of our students, but I'm not surprised. Um, it's a great place that encourages great things. So uh, thank you guys for representing Hunter and Central so well. We're, we're incredibly, incredibly proud of you, so thank you. Um, I just wanted to say no offense to your previous year's uh, presentations, but I love this format because it's yeah. amazing to be able to see what, um, just to be able to see these kids. I think this is such a breath of fresh air to see, you know, beyond just the curriculum. And um, so I think this is a great format for um, bringing really what's going on inside the school to the community because that's what I think is, you know, so necessary. And um, I, I will just echo what Mrs. Hughes said, is I'm just blown away by the maturity and, and the, the drive and uh, the curiosity. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, I just had a, a quick question. All right. Families and students, I know it is a school night, so we will not be offended if you have yes. to step away. Uh, hold on, hold on one second. Oh, we have one more? Just one more question. I, I'm so fascinated by all of the topics, and I couldn't keep up, and there were... Two, something about autonomy or navigating online. That was a research topic. What was it? Autonomous navigation. Somebody's um, doing it. Or no, Kathy was showing. For the kids from this year, autonomous navigation environments. Yeah. Um, autonomous. An AP research student this year is doing autonomous navigation in virtual environments, but it's not an online thing. It's. Okay. It goes beyond even my understanding of stuff. But um, yeah, my plan, is to, my plan is to invite board members to our presentations yes. this spring. So if you're yes. available, um, you know, a couple weeks in April, you're welcome to come to any of them. Yes, and, and what was the other one right after that? Something about hate speech and comedy? Did I hear it right? Uh, yeah, another student who's doing comedic hate speech on TV. Wow. Yeah. And I Thank think you. what's kind of fascinating, and I know I was speaking to one or two of the students who are in that research class right now, they're at the stage of the year where they've sort of shaped a question um, and they're beginning that inquiry. And just like any sort of investigative inquiry, that question can change, it can evolve. As they learn uh, about the subject, that question continues to evolve. So I know at the end of the year when, when they're presenting, quite often you hear about things like where they started versus where they've ended up, or even those instances where some of the things that they maybe thought going into this project were proven just true, um, and, 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 and not avenues for further research, but that's rather pointing them in yet a new direction. So it truly is um, just acknowledging that process, and as Ms. Donhauser and Ms. Stutzman were saying, they are furthering the knowledge in that respective field. They have to identify an area that has not been studied, and they have to propose an inquiry and study to better define or, or explore that area. And sometimes that leads to results, and sometimes that leads to just further study. Um, so what is at the beginning uh, is, is only the, the first part of the story. And uh, so, so before everyone goes, I'll share just a couple of quick, very quick thoughts, and then my, my report is over, too, so we can make a little break to allow some people to go catch the, the game. Uh, the, um, <laughs> go birds. Uh, when we talk about, you know, like service, personalization, and equity, service learning, personalization, and equity, and I just have to thank uh, Ms. Bosom, Ms. Donhauser, Ms. Stutzman, I have to thank you, Mr. McIsaac, and Ms. Candelosi Haid, I mean, none of this happens without all of you, uh, but in particular, the, just the, the power and innovation of our, of our teachers and, and the, the engagement of our kids. We're seeing those things come together. It's proof in the pudding right here. 
Um, and what we also heard tonight was the importance of ninth grade as a place to plant these seeds. That's really important also. I don't get to see some of you uh, quite often until you're juniors and seniors and you start to work on policy committees and you start to come out for different things, but your ninth and 10th grade um, activities in sort of sharpening uh, your interests and your skills are just as important, which leads us to ultimately, what are we doing more and more with K-8 to ensure that on the equity side of this, every single student has an opportunity to do this by the time they graduate. Um, and we have progress there, certainly. You'll hear, more, you'll hear more about that, whether it's beautification projects on campus from our Aspire students uh, with Mr. Cohen, or it's um, uh, the youth participatory action research that our bilingual, multilingual students do uh, in, in um, our world languages department. I mean, you're gonna hear a lot about this. And, and again, underneath all of it is the commitment to ensure that every student has the opportunity to, to, to do this kind of stuff before they graduate. Um, truly, certainly beyond the test scores. Thank you, thank you.